there is a human element to that as well, and that's the decision-making part. So the computer can tell you and you can visualize whatever you want, but ultimately those decisions are made by humans, by us. So hopefully, though, the visualization and the analysis on the geographic information system will allow us to interpret and visualize data so that we can make the best or most optimal decision for whatever question it is we're asking. Okay, so here's some of the things that you can do with GIS. Obviously, you can map where things are, but you can also map how much is there. So you can map populations and you can map densities. Um, you know, a really popular thing in Maryland would be to show where the where where do people live, right? Where is the population of Maryland? And that's generally along the I-95 corridor there in Maryland. You can look at what's inside. An example would be uh, if you're opening up a restaurant in Baltimore, a French restaurant, and the minimum, the lowest meal that you're offering is $50, you might want to say, okay, well, what other French restaurants are in Baltimore? And then um, if I want to open it up in Canton, are there other French restaurants nearby? Okay, and then you can map changes over time. Okay, how do populations change over time? Migratory um, populations, for example. So when we're dealing with GIS and National Geographic, we definitely don't want kids just sitting inside at the computer looking at data. Part of what GIS is is really getting kids outside and exploring nature and collecting data in their own local environment. And that's what we aim for, is really to, to have GIS be um, an integral part of learning uh, science or social studies concepts. 